purchase process. I think everyone has a different way of going about this. I know Carlos, you and I have chatted about this in pretty significant yeah. detail in terms of like how now we sit on a purchasing decision for a, a significant a period, a period of time before we actually pull the trigger on it. So this right. is something that I wanted to kind of get everyone's thoughts on about what your purchasing process looks like. How do you catalog the information? Like how yeah. do you go about deciding which retailer to buy from? How do you uh, determine if you need that figure at all? So yeah. um, Carlos, yeah. I'll start with you on this one. Then we'll jump to Mr. Kiko. Ho, ho, yeah. ho. Kiko. So <laughs> I, I'll, um, I'll tell a little bit of my story. So yeah, go ahead. I had about 260 figures and my original thought was I want to have pieces that are important. I had Star Wars, RoboCop, uh, Marvel, all that. Then I started realizing, like, I'm just having pieces and hot toys just to have them. I feel like I don't really feel like the connection, right? So then I did what everyone told me, which was just buy what you love. The problem is that we're very nerdy and we tend to love a lot of shit, right? Or just like it overall. So I kind of went down the same path and I started saying, well, I love Marvel more than anything. So let me buy a ton of Marvel pieces. So I got pieces that are not really important, like T'Chaka or a Mark One Ultron or you know, a vision. Like to me, they're just okay characters. And like, I don't think really anyone built a relationship with T'Chaka from the one or two minutes that he was in Black Panther or the Mark One Ultron. Like, did you really feel the need to have them for spending $200? But the problem that I started having is that, see, we all buy one figure and we go to the next one and the next one and that keeps going. And I felt like that was my problem. So you and I, we talked about it and we, you know, I said, hey, I'm going to stick to top 50 just 50 figures and I'm going to buy some statues. Right. And we started uh, putting them on, on tier system. So tier one are figures that are just absolutely need your loved ones, like an Iron Man for me, Star Lord. Tier two are some of your most badass, important, critical figures in your collection, um, whatever that may mean for you. Right. Uh, tier three were some of your most favorite, like a Yondu and tier four were characters I just like, like an Ant-Man, Captain Rex, you know, they're just I just like them, but they're not that crucial. So then I started going into that process of saying, if I'm going to only have 50, then, you know, you start going into things like a T'Chaka. You start going into things like a Mark One or like a Mysterio. And you started saying like, yeah, they're cool, but they're not tier five where I, it just means I dislike them. But it just means that I really don't really what I'd rather spend two hundred dollars on a Mysterio, two hundred dollars on a war machine and a stormtrooper. Or would I rather get that six hundred dollars and go buy a tier two? Uh, Captain Jack Sparrow at DX15, which is going to bring me more happiness. So instead of spending money on things that were on the lower tier, and honestly, tier four eventually with time, if I only have 50 figures, they're going to move away from it. So I stopped doing that. And now I really think about, is this a top 50 figure? And if he is, what tier is he going to be? Because if he's a tier four, then I'm probably, once I start getting deeper into my collection and maybe Avatar becomes great and other characters start coming out, Maybe the first ones that are going to go are going to be a tier four, but I no longer go from like, hey, I'm going to get one figure and I'm looking forward to the next one and then the next one because I'm not going to just buy anything. So it makes me appreciate what I have a little longer and it lets me customize the things I do have, like a my Iron Man, right? My Mark 85, get, I'm getting that customized. So would I rather spend $200 on a T'Chaka or would I rather spend $200 to get my Star-Lord, which is a tier one, rooted? I'll rather have that because it's going to be more realistic and it's going to make the scope look a lot better. Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm looking at things, right? Where would I rather spend that money on a pointless figure just so that I can say I have figures um, or 200, 300? And if that's the route you want to go with, that's fine. But I'm just saying that you'll eventually go into, where, which, which is where I was, of just like buying figures and you move on to the next one. Or you're like, oh, you buy one and you sell one. But I think if you have a set number, you really start analyzing what makes the most sense uh and what's your top 50 so for me it's 50 for maybe others is 75 or whatever but yeah yeah that's what i did and, and it's honestly it's helped so much because i just no longer see something and i'm just like i need that right like yeah. the next one i really want is like invincible i really want that figure from so so toys but i know he's probably a tier four so and i'm already kind of towards my limit on my top 50 so i'm like what's the point of buying him now because eventually tier threes are going to come in and he's going to be the first one to go. Yep. So I'm just not even going to do it. So now I still see my collection and I appreciate it more. So, well, that's why I call this. I didn't mean to cut you off, but this is a, this tier idea was a really good idea that you had. And I'm just sharing mine with people to give them an example. What I've done here is kind of what Carlos had recommended, but I took it where I only have things in this list that I have on pre-order or that I currently own in my collection. 
So that's how the way I've organized this. And I went through and I looked at everything and I had, and I said, okay, let's look at these characters. Where would I rank them based on the tiers that we established one through four, right? One are absolutely essential. You need that character Two, pretty much essential, pretty close. Like you love the character. They're very badass. They're not quite in that tier one, but they're pretty important to you. Nonetheless, tier three. Now we start to get into the realm of, I like this character a lot, but I don't know if I love this character, but I like this character a lot. Tier like four. Yeah. You start to get into. I like this character, but maybe it's a great figure. Like for example, when you look at mine, you look at War Machine, right? I like War Machine, I don't love War Machine, but the figure is incredible. The Mark IV, same with Dooku, the Dooku figure, amazing. I like Dooku a lot, same with Mysterio. Mysterio, great figure. That's kind of all what you're seeing there in the tier four section. Like with, you know, tier two and tier three, stuff like that, you see a lot of very popular characters. Tier one and two, you also have to look at it, if you're thinking about getting into statues, Carlos and I talked about this, you probably should not buy a statue of any character that it's not in the first two tiers. Like, because at that point you're dedicating space and money uh, and, and possibly energy if you end up selling it later to a character that you don't really love that much. So yeah. when one does come in and you do want a statue and, you have, and you're gonna need that space, you're gonna sell it, right? So the character's gotta be beloved in those first two tiers, I think, for you to get a statue. That's, I think, and, and, a good way of looking at it. And, and I think only this tier system works if you say I'm not going to have no more than a set number of figures, because if you have 300 figures and you start naming them in tiers, matter, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you say I'm not going to have more than 50, more than 75, and probably 75 is as high as you should go, because then it really makes you stop and think and say, okay, I have 150 figures. I need to cut my shit in half. And any figure after that, I need to start getting rid of tier fours. And guess what? Once you start getting rid of them, you're like, I no longer miss them. I had a T'Chaka and I sold them. And it's like, well, I've never really gave a fuck about a T'Chaka or a Mark One or a Vision or these other characters that are like tier four characters, but I just don't care. I, I got that $600 and now I'm going to customize my Mark 85, which is a character that's a tier one for me, which is going to bring me even more love and more value and more things to my best figure. You know, so that's how I'm looking at it. So that's yeah. my process. So Kiko, fill us in on your process, bro, because I'm sure it's pretty different than mine and Carlos's. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, that, that's what I love about this community is yeah. that there is so many differences and variants out there of how people collect. And the I actually said it in one of my latest videos is that, you know, we always hear the little mantra of, you know, collect what you like, but it's also collect how you like as well. You know, let no one tell you how to do something. If something makes if something brings you joy by, you know, searching for the deals and that's the way you like to do it, let's go for that. If you like the feels, as I talked about, you know, let's go for that as well. But my purchase process is a little bit different um, simply because it goes all the way back to the way I've always collected. So when I was a kid, you know, I wanted to collect lines. That's one of the things I've always enjoyed and liked. So when I got the first power of the force line, you know, I needed all of them type of thing. So that's a dangerous way to play six scale collecting or statues or anything, because collecting lines at that scale and at that price point is kind of unrealistic for the average, you know, collector type of thing. If you wanted to say, I want to collect every star Wars figure, or every Marvel figure. Okay. Good luck. Have fun. Um, especially with the 58 stormtrooper variants and the 58, you know, star Lord variants, all those different things, you know, you're, you're going to have to figure that out. But for me, I I feel like I've finally figured out what it is that is going to work for me because the, collecting is an evolution because you're like, okay, let me try something. And if it doesn't hit me the right way, then let's make an adjustment. But the thing I've got to recommend and stress is that always go at a pace to where you don't get yourself burnt out. You know, try mm -hmm. things, see if something looks good. Maybe try, like the statue is kind of like the last tier because you it's hard to move them. It's, they take up a lot of space and stuff. So be really cautious whenever you get ready to start diving into the statues thing. But if you want to explore an idea of getting into six scale collecting or anything like that, everyone always says, you know, find something in stock and get one and let's see if you even like that type of thing. And so for me, I had to have a little bit of growing pains of knowing that, hey, you know, just because it's out doesn't mean you have to have it. And I had lots of stupid things that I bought that, once again, took the L on and had to move out because they did not have a good you know, spot in my collection. But now I am the Marvel guy. I'm the Star Wars guy and I'm that 80s nostalgia guy. That's what I collect. So outside of my Dark Knight figures, that's the one exception. We know that. Mm -hmm. So when I come down to figure out, OK, what am I going to add to my collection? What's the next process type of thing? I look to see. Okay, what is out there that is a 
fair deal for something. Well, I, well find find the figure that you want first of all. Don't just don't go and be like, I need something. I need to fill a, fill a hole. Only fill it if you actually want to put something in there. You know, I, I hate the people, not hate the people, but I hate the idea that if you haven't bought something in a while, you have to buy something. I don't mm -hmm. understand that. Right. They're like, I've not bought anything in a while. You know, this money's burning a hole in my pocket. Hold on. I'm sure something is going to come out there that you can go and buy, mm -hmm. but only buy something if you really want something. Don't buy to buy. That's one of the biggest things I had to learn is don't buy to buy. But then also find something that is worthy of buying. And this is what brings me to my thing I was going to say about the dark side, Anakin. Yeah. I don't like the reissues because I feel like there should be something that you should chase. Everyone's like, well, everyone mm. deserves an opportunity to get something. Yeah, It's not fair that they got it at retail. Okay. Well, let that be your chase piece. Let that be the thing mm. you say, okay, I'm willing to save up for this one because I want that. Because it helps eliminate the idea of, oh, I got to buy this because I have to have it because someone else has it. If it's a chase piece, it, you'll really find out whether you want it or not. And so that's one of the things I've really kind of decided is that I'm going to go after pieces that I really want. If I have to pay uh, an upcharge for it, okay, I'm going to save for that. I'm going to plan for that. And I'm going to get that. And that way it means something to me because I chased it. I caught it. It's mine. So that's where I come out on those reissues things. I think you should chase pieces from time to time and just don't always find the bargain bin because you have to have it. So that's my process. I love the idea of the tier system. Uh, and I think you can still do that regardless of your size, of your collection. You can at least say, okay, these are my top 10 figures type of thing. Just so you can say what they are and why and be able to speak to those. I've said all the time, everything in your collection, you should be able to say why you have it, not mm -hmm. because it was on sale and I got it. Everything should have yeah, a that makes a lot of sense. It. Everything should have a reason to it. It does. The, and I, the, I agree. Carlos, I will say, Carlos, before you jump in, the tier system is 100% Carlos's idea. That was not mine. I just like took it because I was like, hey, this is a really good idea. I'm going to do it too. But this, I want to give Carlos credit for that. This, the tier thing was his idea. Yeah. Um. So, so here's one thing I would say. I know you say, you know, click how you like, but the problem with that is, you know, how many times I've heard people say things like, and there's multiple ways, right? Like, hey, do you feel like, and I've had a couple of people like, Hey, do you think this, this is like an addiction? Like, do you feel like I were addicted or uh, I'm going like, you know, we go from one figure to the next and then the next, um, do you feel like, uh, you know, this is taking over your world? Do you feel like this is too stressful or do you feel like sometimes like you don't have enough money to like, I don't want to go and buy that game because that's an NRD or I don't want to go buy that because that's an NRD. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go out because that's money I could have bought for a figure that tells me you're in too deep. Or I get actually people who tell me I'm in too deep. So mm -hmm. that tells me one, if you keep doing what you're doing, right? Like doing the same things over and over and expecting something different is a definition of insanity, right? So if you're doing that, then that tells me you have 100, 200, 300 plus figures and you definitely need a change. You definitely should go to a, I shouldn't have more than X amount of figures and I should do a tier system because that used to be me, right? So I'm, I'm only speaking from experience, but you can collect whatever you like and maybe one day you have an epiphany that what we're saying today makes total sense. But that's the only thing I would say, like, yes, you're, you are right, Kiko, in that sense that like, you should collect what you love. But for those people that do feel stressed out or into sure. deep or yeah. all those different things, like I literally go from one figure to the next or you, the fact that you even forget a certain piece, like yeah. the fact that we, you know, we've had people be like, oh, I forgot I had that figure or I forgot I had that on pre-order. That tells you you're doing something wrong. And if you don't believe that, then you're just in denial because you are. You clearly are. Um, like you should know exactly what you have, you know, or if you're too stressed out or whatever, this shouldn't be your world. This should collecting should be a very small part of who you are. And if it's the biggest part, then that needs to change because it shouldn't be, um, doesn't matter how you look at it. it, it it's not who you are. It's just a small part or a small rep representation of who you are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but, um, yeah, that's, that's what I would add to that. So, yeah, that, that's a great point as well. And I hope no one thinks either of us three are out there condoning addictions and things like that by any means, which I know no, no one here does, but no. I think with anything, there's always going to be, you know, those people that do thing in excess and people that do thing in moderation and anything good in life. I mean, you can spend too much time at the gym. You can spend too much time doing yeah, anything yeah, to where you, I love my job too much and you neglect your family. You know, there's always ways to, you know, try to figure out what that balance is. So those are great points that you brought up about making sure that what you're doing is not an addiction. Um, I've done a video on that as well about the there difference between addiction um, and, uh, and collecting and such. So, but those are great points. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Absolutely guys. You guys nailed that topic. Perfect. 